Hey, my name is Bill Marion and this is A Nose for Life. In this video, I'm going to talk about some differences between national parks and national forests while showing some amazing video we captured this past week in Shenandoah National Park in Virginia and some additional video we captured over the past few weeks in Monongahela National Forest in West Virginia. I'm also going to show you this crazy road just off the Blue Ridge Parkway that got me in trouble with Carolyn. For the record, Carolyn hates these roads. I'm in a lot of trouble. I might even end up in the back of the truck. I'm just saying. Anyway, there's some amazing scenery in this video and you might learn a thing or two, so be sure to stick around until the end. So let's get started. dawned on Carolyn and myself that we haven't been to Skyline Drive much at all this year because we're just so thankful that things are opening back up, that we've been going to different areas, different regions and covering different things, you know, that we weren't able to cover last year. But we thought we would take a day or at least an afternoon to come up here to Skyline Drive here in Virginia and show you guys some amazing images. Now, we've made a lot of videos up here. We wanted to check back in up here at Skyline Drive today. We are looking for bear. We're hoping we can find some bear, some deer and some amazing scenery just to bring to you guys for this video. President Woodrow Wilson established the National Park Service in 1916 to consolidate America's federal park lands under one agency. But the national park concept goes back to President Grant, who in 1872 signed a law establishing the first national park in the world, Yellowstone National Park. National forests began just a little bit earlier, and things started moving forward quickly in 1911 when President William Howard Taft signed the Weeks Act into law. Now, I've mentioned the Weeks Act before on this channel. Here's a quick review and the simplest way to explain it. The Weeks Act empowered the federal government to purchase private land if the purchase was deemed necessary to protect rivers and the headwaters of watersheds in the eastern United States. The law allowed for land acquired through this act to be preserved and maintained as a national forest territory. The Weeks Act was motivated by the intent of the federal government to purchase lands in the eastern United States. At the time, the federal government didn't own a lot of land east of the Mississippi. That's kind of hard to imagine today, but it's true. The Weeks Act made it possible for the federal government to buy private land, and they could buy your land even if you didn't want to sell it. And as the years went by, the Weeks Act was expanded by other acts with more teeth and flexibility. But during this same time period, there was a huge push to create a park service that would work with the Forest Service. So both of these agencies were birthed around the same time period. So Carol and I followed Skyline Drive all the way to the Blue Ridge Parkway here in Virginia. Now we've been wanting to do this road for a while. Okay, scratch that. I've been wanting to do this road for a while. These kind of roads wig Carolyn out. I mean, it just, they drive her crazy. They're narrow, they're rocky, they're bumpy. It's called Bald Mountain Jeep Trail. Now we're not exactly in a Jeep. It's on the bucket list. We're still in Old Faithful. You know her as the truck. Yes, that's right. That's what she goes by, the truck. But anyway, this is an amazing back road mountain trail that Blue Ridge Parkway keeps open, but only a few months out of the year. This road is closed January to April, so you can't just come up here willy-nilly like in the wintertime because let's just face it, parts of the Blue Ridge Parkway, parts of Skyline Drive, if not all of Skyline Drive, is often closed during the wintertime, so you're not going to get to this part of the Blue Ridge Parkway during the wintertime. But in the summer, this is a great Jeep trail. It's a great four-wheel drive trail, but, but now you're not going to go anywhere too fast down this road. I mean, you're going to have to drive really slowly. I mean, sometimes there are there are places along the trail where I'm thinking maybe they meant toy Jeeps and not like real Jeeps because you can barely fit down the trail in your vehicle. I'm just saying, it's, it's one of those you're gonna have to take your time and just kind of cruise through here. 
got myself into a mess once again. Ugh. So yeah, I'm in timeout. Maybe I shouldn't have gone down the Jeep road. The National Park Service has two roles. First, it's charged with preserving the ecological and historical integrity of its parks. Second, the National Park Service makes these places accessible to the public. Now listen, this isn't a political channel, but if you keep up with conversations about, well, about anything, I'm sure you can imagine that the National Park has its work cut out for it. Preserving ecological integrity and providing access isn't easy during any time period, and these days, it's complicated. And let's face it, historical integrity, it changes by the decade. But the easiest way to explain national parks is that they're all about conservation, whether it be land or history. Here's their mission statement. The National Park Service preserves unimpaired the natural and cultural resources and values of the national park system for the enjoyment, education, and inspiration of this and future generations. The Park Service cooperates with partners to extend the benefits of natural and cultural resource conservation and outdoor recreation throughout this country and the world. The mission of the Forest Service is a little different. The mission of the Forest Service is to sustain the health, diversity, and productivity of the nation's forest and grasslands to meet the needs of present and future generations. While the National Park Service is all about conservation, education, and all that, National Forests are about managing natural resources. The Forest Service manages 170 million acres compared to the National Park's 50 million acres. Of course, I've seen it also that they manage 80 million. I'm, I'm not sure which. Let me know in the comments. The Forest Service does an incredible amount of research on all aspects of forestry, including assistance to state and local governments and industries related to forestry. They even help private landowners utilize the land better. So national parks are all about conservation, public access, and getting the story right. <laughs> Good luck with that last one. The Forest Service is all about being effective at utilizing the land for commercial and public use. So they both preserve land for public use, and in case you haven't noticed, normally they're both located in some breathtaking locations. But let's look at some other differences. These days it's going to cost you a little bit to enter a national park. Normally, entering a national forest, well, it's free. Activities are limited in national parks. Now, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but when you're in a national park, you really don't have access to all of it, or most of it for that matter. Remember, their primary concern is conservation. Most of the time, it's not going to cost you anything to go to a national forest, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg for a campsite in a national forest either. I guess I would argue that national forests are a little more user-friendly in that regard, but that's just my opinion. Let me know your opinion in the comments. Maybe I shouldn't have gone down the Jeep road. After all, the truck is not a Jeep. But still, it's a cool road. Just probably not for our truck. Not to be too insulting to the truck or anything. I mean, it's got us out of a lot of jams, but that road was... But if you have the right kind of vehicle, Bald Mountain, Jeep Road, whatever it's called, it's just off the Blue Ridge Parkway, not far from Skyline Drive, and it's a lot of fun if you're in the right vehicle. This overlook here, we don't stop here much at all, but it's pretty amazing. So I'm walking around here at Spyglass Overlook, letting Carolyn, I mean the truck, cool off. Okay, just one more thing. I want to give you a heads up about our release schedule for July. Normally, we release videos on Tuesdays or Thursdays, and sometimes both. Every now and then, I throw out a bonus video. However, in case you didn't know, Carolyn and I are about to be grandparents. My oldest daughter, Anna, and my son-in-law, Oz, are due the very day I'm releasing this video. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to affect our release schedule for the next couple of weeks, or even for the next three weeks. After all, we've never been grandparents before. So I'm not exactly sure when the next time we're going to 
to release a video is going to be. I mean, think about it. By the time you shoot the video, by the time you edit it, release it, and so on, I, I just have no idea. Obviously, we're really excited, but I'll do my very best to keep you posted. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a comment. That's really important. Please make sure you've clicked the like button and that you're subscribed. My name is Bill Marion, and this is A Nose for Life. If you like this video, according to the algorithm, you'll like these videos too. Check them out.